some coloured pencils, some wax crayons, some felted pens, some black pens, uh, waterproof ones, non-waterproof ones, permanent marker, fine liner, whatever you've got to hand. Um, I've got a selection here of different thicknesses. Now we're ready to start adding colour. Um, at the end of this video, there is a um, colour wheel which looks similar to this, um, and it'll be quite nice for you to use so you can see which kinds of colours you can use that are harmonious colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel, and that will help you with a lot of your blending and using colours that will blend into each other really nicely. Um, and I'm going to go through a little bit of that just now. So, for example, on this piece here. Um, I'm going to show you how to shade this particular circle. And we're going to use coloured pencils. You want nice sharp coloured pencils. And you're going to choose um, one colour or two colours. So I'm going to go for orange. So in my set of coloured pencils, I've got a nice bright orange. And I've got this ready orange. Okay, and I'm going to use both of those two. I'm going to start with the lighter one first. And the great thing about Kandinsky's work is the shading that's involved. So what I'm doing right now is going round the edge. And remember your paper is flexible, so move your paper more so than your hand. So you get a nice curve. And what you'll do is you will press down quite nice and hard around the edge first. And then you're going to ease the pressure of your pencil. But you are still going to follow the shape of this circle. So you're still going to keep moving your page around. You'll notice that I'm moving my pencil in that curved direction of the circle and that way I make sure that the circle is smooth that it looks nice and neat so I'm always pressing a little bit harder on that edge first and a lighter as I get into the middle and I'm going to work all the way back around again now this takes time and I've always had pupils and students say to me oh it just takes such a long time to colour in and yes it does but it's only because then it looks really nice and neat. Otherwise, you end up with scratchy colours. Um, and you've got to take pride in your work. Otherwise, there's no point. There's no point producing something that's a bit half-hearted. And as I get closer and closer into the middle, I get lighter and lighter. I'm still not quite happy with that. I'm going to keep blending through. And this is when you can use your darker ready orange colour. And you can go back around the edge of that shape to really make it stand out and to add a little bit of extra depth. It 
it's almost like painting. Now, where you've got this overlap shape, um, you can decide what colour you want that one to be. Now, I'm going to make that one yellow, so the overlap part here is the bit which you really need to consider about your colour. So, for example, if this trapezium is yellow, and this yellow is on top of the orange, and the trapezium is slightly transparent, what colour would this segment be? That's what you need to think about. And so if you colour the whole of this circle in and then you colour the yellow on top, it might not look quite right. Um, but it might. So you know you've got to you've got to try these things out. So for example, if I I'm gonna colour this in solid. Okay, it's not gonna have any shading, it's just gonna be all one colour. And I'm layering one way and then avoiding where the circle intersects. With this bit, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go with my light orange and I'm going to really lightly shade that in. And I'm going to go over it with the yellow. I'm going to go back over it. And again. So you end up with a mixture of those two colours, which I think looks really nice and I think is a very clever use of colour and colour theory. And remember those two colours are next to each other on the colour wheel. So you've got your yellow, you've got your orange, and if you mix the two together you've got your yellowy orange. Now it's at this stage where you can decide what other materials you want to use. Um, and I would mix it up you know, this is a mixed media piece of work, so you might then decide that you are going to use um, some felt pens um, and you're going to add some nice solid areas of colour. If you have different shades of the same colour, you can still do that with colour pens. It might be that you decide to mix it up a little bit. So I'm using a technique with this pen, well, this pen where I'm flicking it out into the middle of the shape and I'm leaving The edge quite wispy. And 
then what I can do is using um, some coloured pencil is add a bit of a texture. Um, and it's the same with wax crayons if you're using wax crayons again choose a set of colors And you can blend these colours in a similar way. also decide to have some areas like the negative space so actually shading in
So once you've got to this stage, you're ready to start adding the black pen um, outlines. Now, it's important that you look carefully at Kandinsky's work and you see that he has used a variety of thicknesses of line, which is why it's then important for you to use a range of different pens if you have them or use a ruler to help you gauge um, the different thicknesses of line. So you can see here, there's a thick line. There's a line here that's slightly thicker on one side and then slightly thinner on the other. Same with this one. And what you're gonna do first and foremost is draw in some extra lines that you can use to, to add on top of. So find your pencil and decide on a few little lines that you're going to have. Now I've left this bit here because I'm going to keep that as a checkerboard. I'm going to do that with black pen. I've got the two lines that go through the semicircles there. I'm going to extend a couple of the lines of my triangles. But I'm also going to have some lines coming off my circle. I'm going to have... You can do these with a compass if it's easier for you. I'm going to have um, some lines quite close to each other. I'm going to have And then what you're going to do is just using your different pens, um, start going over the lines. done um i could keep adding to this i could go over these lines here that i've not quite finished off yet um or i could leave them as they are um you can overdo the black uh, pen work so just be mindful of, of how much you're adding on um and make sure that you draw those lines on first before you do add the black pen so you got an idea of of what you're adding and how much you're adding well done everyone you should have produced um, a mixed media piece of work based on the work of Wasley Kandinsky. Towards the end of this video, there are lots of differentiation strategies to use with this task to extend the mathematical learning of it, um, especially with things like angles, um, obtuse, acute angles, those kind of things, different types of triangles that you could use, um, and maybe some ways that you could use addition and a subtraction of angles to help 
with the with the learning of this particular task and how it really fits into a cross curricular link I think is really important and um, please do tag me in your makes with the hashtag Mrs Mystery Makes um, and send me your work um, via Facebook or Instagram because I'd love to see what you do bye guys <laughs>